in the description of every video, I always put a link for channel feedback and video suggesting ideas. And I've been getting a lot of requests here lately about the history or the story behind our International Harvester Cub Cadet. So that's what we're gonna talk about today. So what we have is a 1974 International Harvester Cub Cadet 1450. It's a Quiet Line series. It was manufactured in Louisville, Kentucky. It's got a 14 horse Kohler motor on it. A great little machine. The way we ended up acquiring this was uh, we were in desperate need to try to find some sort of riding mower to be able to uh, cut our grass at a much more decent time than run around with a push mower. Started hitting uh, Craigslist, looking around, and every time we found something that looked promising, the uh, item was gone. So I decided to take a little different approach and I put a want ad out there basically saying, you know, we're looking for a rider mower in this price range. It doesn't have to be working. Um, I'm pretty mechanically inclined, so as long as I could find something and still be able to find parts for it, I can usually get it up and going relatively quickly. So I ended up getting a reply back from this guy, and he was sort of poking and prodding, just trying to figure out a little bit about us and what we were looking to do with it. And um, I responded back, kind of explained our, our circumstances, and he said, oh, I got a mower. Why don't you come out and take a look? It's been sitting for about the last year or two. We get out there and we take a look and I see this machine and I really wasn't quite sure what I was looking at at that time. And I knew it was a little old. I wasn't quite sure if I could find parts for it. Uh, I just didn't know a lot about it. But we sat and chat with him a little bit and he kind of explained a little bit of the history of the mower to me. Apparently right now we are the third owner. The original guy had this for several years and used it. It actually even had a bucket on the front of it. And then that guy acquired that machine. He went, took it in, got it all tuned up, and ended up giving the bucket to one of his buddies because he didn't really have a use for it. He used it to cut apparently 17 acres of grass. And did that for several years until he upgraded to a larger uh, zero turn type mower. Then it's pretty much sat, and when we had acquired it, it um, had some work to get done. There was a flat tire that sat for a couple years, so the carburetor had to be gone through. Uh, it needed a battery, and there was a handful of other little small miscellaneous things, but really wasn't that big of a deal. Got online, started looking for parts, and actually then became open, I guess, or realized on the type of market that is out there for these machines. There's a huge collector's group out there. There's a lot of people that use these for tractor pulls. Uh, just a real good bulletproof machine that, I mean, they're still sticking around and here it is, you know, a 43 year old machine. So what we really use this machine for a, a lot is uh, snow removal in the winter. It's got a 46 inch snow blower, actually snow thrower on it. So we keep both of our driveways open with that. We keep a trail open to our chicken coop so we can get out there easily in the winter. And then sometimes we'll keep a trail open out to um, some of the wood piles and stuff if we need to get out there and deal with that. Another big thing that I actually use it for is, um, uh, hauling stuff around. A lot of times I'll throw a trailer on, get out in the hay fields here, usually in the springtime, and pick up a lot of rocks. That way when the farmer uh, that does our field out back comes through, he's not beating up a lot of his blades, and um, also use it for haul a lot of wood. It's really nice because I can get into the woods really easily. Um, it's small, it's compact. In the past we used to do, actually use a Yamaha Warrior four-wheeler, and that's not really a work type four-wheeler. It doesn't have four by four. It doesn't come with a hitch type setup. I ended up putting a hitch on there and it's just not really built for heavy loads and I ended up bending it up pretty bad, uh, hauling around a lot of firewood with it. So that's sort of what that job, or that uh, Cub Cadet has sort of taken over is haul a lot of that wood around. It does a great job for that. Um, I, I kind of got thinking a little bit about this. I, at some point we plan to get a full size tractor. We're still a little ways away from that because we want to pay cash for it. We want to get something decent. And I've been kind of thinking about what will happen when we get a tractor. Will it replace this totally? And I'm not quite sure yet because this thing is so small and it can get into some nice tight areas. Um, it's not quite as versatile as, you know, for where we get on and go, you know, truck down to the neighbor's house or something as easily. But it does do a great job on our own property. I have a, a boat that I ended up acquiring from my grandmother. She gave it to me free uh, with one stipulation on it and she said, if I ever part ways with it, um, I can't sell it. I have to give it away to another another duck hunter. Um, I come from a background. My grandfather was a federal game warden. If he wasn't out dealing, working, he was out hunting himself. Uh, that was just a huge part of his life. Even when he was on his deathbed with cancer and stuff, he took all his boys out for one last, you know, hurrah, you know, kind of going out duck hunting and stuff. And it was just a very important thing. 
And that's obviously carried down, you know, that's what I do a lot of in the fall time. I just love duck hunting. Get an opportunity to spend time with the dog. It makes me feel like I connect with my grandfather in some ways. And with that, what my grandma, I guess, had laid out there, it got me thinking a little bit about this uh, International Harvester Cub Cadet and when it comes time to part ways with it. Um, you know, I think the guy that sold this to us, I think that was the main reason he sent out the email, is he just kind of poking and prodding to see if, if we were a good fit for it and, and uh, we'll take care of it. And I think I'd like to do the same type of thing. At some point down the road, um, maybe we'll end up giving this thing away or selling it at a really, a really good price, uh, less than what we had paid for it. And uh, hopefully it would go to a, another small farm or homestead of some sort where it can get many more uh, years of use just because this is such a great machine. So that's the story of our International Harvester Cub Cadet. Um, I don't think it's quite the cool a story as our 1958 Ford F100. I think that will have a great story behind it when I finally get around to restoring it. But someone was really asking about this or there was multiple people asking about this in that feedback and video uh, suggestion idea form and thought we would just address that. You know, the squeaky wheel gets the oil, right? So hope you guys enjoy the video and we'll see you on the next one. Thanks for watching.